When he hears a loud sound, he remembers the deafening blast of Yawm Al-Qiyamah فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ The deafening blast that will cause people to come out of their graves. When he is or she is admiring the beauty of the sky that is blue and still, they remember a day in which the sky will open up like gates. Allah says, وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَعْدَ The skies will open up and they will become like doors. When they find themselves trekking up a mountain for whatever cause, instantly they remember The mountains will be set in motion on the day of judgment and they will become like a mirage. And mountains will become like cotton scattered into pieces. When that believer finds himself or herself sailing the oceans, they remember a day in which those oceans will be set ablaze. Allah says, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ When the seas shall be set ablaze, لا إله إلا الله As if the water had changed into hydrogen and been set alight. When that believer experiences darkness, they remember the darkness of the grave. When they experience heat, they remember the punishment of Jahannam. When they experience a joy, they remember the joys of Jannah. This is the state of a believer, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. At the same token, however, there may be a large, huge, stark and obvious happening, but will not move a single strand of hair on the body of the heedless ghafil individual. Even if we were to bring down all of the angels to them, and even if we were to allow the dead to speak to them, and even if we were to bring forth every creation in front of them, they would still not believe. Consider the dua of the Prophet ﷺ that he would make shortly before he would embark on a journey. Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha Exalted be our Lord who has subdued this animal for us. وَمَا كُنَّا لَهُ مُقْرِنِينَ And we would have never been able to subdue that animal. And then he says, وَإِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا لَمُنْقَلِبُونَ And surely one day we are going to return to our Lord. When he is about to embark on a journey, he is thinking about the home of the hereafter. Even when he is within that journey, he hasn't forgotten. And he is reminding others. Thus when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was traveling and he reached a valley known as Wadi Muhassir. This is the valley in which Allah Almighty destroyed Abraha and his men. This happened years ago. Yet when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was passing through that valley, he hurried through it. Remembering the community who were destroyed by Allah in this venue, he hurried. Look at how conscious and alert his heart was. Interacting with the events of the past as well. Even the very gifts that would be given to the Prophet ﷺ, he would use them as an opportunity to remind people about the enormity of that day, Yawm Al Qiyamah, and the joys of Jannah. As Imam Al Bukhari narrates on the authority of Al Bara ibn Azib, he says the Messenger ﷺ was once gifted with a silk garment. And so the companions began to pass it round, marveling at just how soft this bit of garment was. And so the Messenger وسلم, saw this as an opportunity to remind them and to bring their attention back to Jannah. He said to them, are you surprised at how soft it is? I swear by Allah, the handkerchiefs of my companion Sa'd ibn Mu'adh in Jannah are better than this garment, more subtle and more fine. Not just gifts, however, even the very sounds that animals make, the Prophet ﷺ would use it as an opportunity to remind people of the Akhirah. Did he not say, Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abi Huraira, whenever you hear the crowing of a rooster, then ask Allah Almighty from his bounty because that rooster had just seen an angel. 
And whenever you hear the braying of a donkey, ask Allah to protect you from the shaitan, that donkey had just seen a shaitan. The very sounds of the animals are to remind the believer of Allah and his bounty. La ilaha illallah. Another example, the sight of animals fighting, colliding, competing with one another is a sight that captivates the attention of the masses of people. And today, perhaps, it comes under the category of entertainment for others. However, as for our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sight of animals fighting was a platform to remind people of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. As Imam Ahmad narrates on the authority of Abi Dhar, that two sheep had locked horns with one another in front of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion Abu Dhar. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turns to Abu Dhar and he says to him, Ya Abu Dhar, O oh Abu Dhar, do you know why these two sheep are fighting? He said, I don't. He said to him, however, Allah knows. Allah knows why they are fighting and he's going to judge between them on the day of judgment. Ya Allah. He wouldn't allow anything to pass except that he would shift their attention back to Allah Almighty. Even the sight of a breast feeding woman he would invest in that as well to remind himself to reform his companions how wakeful was his heart as imam al-bukhari and muslim narrate on the authority of umar ibn al-khattab a group of prisoners once came to the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and in their midst was a woman who was frantically moving from child to child wanting to nurse them and every time she would come across a child, she would carry him or her, place it near her chest, and she would nurse it. The Prophet ﷺ said to his companions after they had all observed this magnificent scene of motherly affection, he said, Do you think that such a woman would ever throw her child into fire? The companions, they said, No, O Messenger of Allah. He said, thus realize that Allah Almighty's mercy for his creation is greater than the mercy of this woman is for her child. Even that sight, the Messenger وسلم, invested in it to remind people of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. In fact, even on the construction site. When the Messenger وسلم, and his companions were digging the ditch, the trench, before the battle of Al-Ahzab took place, he made sure that he would use every opportunity to shift the attention of the laborers from the construction site back to Jannah and a day when there will be no more construction. As Imam al-Bukhari narrates on the authority of Sahli ibn Sa'ad ibn Sa'idi that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was heard saying as he was carrying the rocks with his companions, he was heard saying, Oh Allah, there is no true life except the life of the hereafter. So forgive my companions, the Ansar and the Muhajirah. La ilaha illallah. Even when he is shifting stone from place to place, look at where his focus and attention is. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Even the very sight of a sun that had just eclipsed, what others would call a mere natural phenomena, the Prophet ﷺ had other ideas. It was an opportunity. Did the sun not eclipse during the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? As Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Abi Musa Al-Ash'ari, it eclipsed and it happened to coincide with the death of his son Ibrahim. And thus it seemed as if even the universe was mourning the death of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he rejected this. Rather he would use this as an opportunity to shift the attention from himself back to Allah Almighty, back to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, back to the need for every individual Muslim to work and plant and prepare a strategy for their Akhirah. He ascended the pulpit and he said to the people, these signs that Allah Almighty sends from time to time, he says, they don't happen for the death or life of any human being. However, Allah Almighty uses them so that people may fear Him. Therefore, if you see any of these signs, then rush to the remembrance of Allah and His dua and repentance to Him. Never mind a sun that had eclipsed 
the very moon in its ordinary and normal state, the Messenger وسلم, would use it as well as a platform to remind about the day in which people will see Allah. And this happened on one evening when the moon was out and it was full. And he looked at the moon and back to his companions and he said, A day shall come, O my companions, when you shall see your Lord. The same way you are looking at this moon and you will not be harmed in the least when doing so. This perpetual state of consciousness that he was in with regards to the hereafter was a characteristic that rubbed off immensely on the companions who lived around him and observed his behavior. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu being one of those individuals. That when Umar radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa of the Muslims living in Medina, the city of Medina was struck by an earthquake, the entire city shook. Umar wasted no time and he ascended the pulpit and he addressed the Muslims. O oh people, how quickly have you changed? By Allah, if this earthquake comes back, I will not live in the city of Medina with you again. Umar is afraid that the earthquake is simply reflecting sins that have accumulated that didn't exist before. Not just the companions, but the tabi'een as well. Malik ibn Dinar. He says that once we were coming back from a boat journey, and there was a man at the bridge who was stopping every boat, and he was wrongfully taking from them toll charges. He was making them pay. He was robbing them. He said, we got to the bridge, we were next to the coast, and the man stopped us. And he said, every one of you, do not move from your place, and do not utter a single word. Malik ibn Dinar, he said, since I didn't possess anything, I placed my garment on my shoulder, I hopped off the boat, and I began to walk away. But the man said, wait, where are you going? Did I not say to you not to move from your place? Malik turned back round and he said to him, sorry, I don't possess anything. So the man said to him, go then. So Malik, he left. And then he said to himself, there and then, this is how the hereafter is going to be. Similarly, those who come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, light from every type of sin and haram, having repented before that, Allah will set them free the quickest and allow them to enter the gardens of Jannah. He said, this is how the Akhirah is going to be. Lightest is quickest, Ya Allah. Not just the companions, not just the tabi'een, but even the poets of Islam develop this type of mentality, as was mentioned in his Diwan, Diwanu, Abil Atahiyah is the name of a second century poet who was close to many of the leaders of the Muslim world at the time. Harun al-Rashid being one of them. Harun al-Rashid had just finished building a huge palace of his and he had decorated it to the max. And then he wanted to invite his companions and those who were close to him, Abu al-Atahiyah being one of them, to come inside and to have a look and see what they think. So they went inside. Harun al-Rashid the Khalifa, he says to Abu al-Atahiyah the poet, give us through your poetry a description of the dunya that we are enjoying. He said, live as long as you wish in a state of peace and serenity within the shade of high-rise palaces. Harun al-Rashid said to him, Ahsant, thumma mada? These are beautiful words. What else can you say? So he gave him the second line of poetry. He said, you are being given every type of pleasure that you may wish for in the morning and in the evening. Harun al-Rashid said, Ahsant, thumma mada? These are beautiful words. What else can you say? Then he gave him the thunderbolt of a couplet. He said to him, however, when death will arrive, and your soul begins to convulse within your chest that is tight and is rattling at the time, only then you will come to realize that you were leading a life of delusion. Harun al-Rashid was not expecting that. So he began to cry. And he cried immensely as well. To a level where all of those who were around him had mercy for the state of sorrow that he had collapsed into. 
And in fact, some of them said to Abu Al-Atahiyah reprimandingly, Al-Fadl ibn Yahya was one of them. He said, the leader of the believers, Harun al-Rashid, invited you into his palace so that you may make him happy. Look, you have just made him cry. But the one who responded was Harun al-Rashid himself. And he said in defense of Abu Al-Atahiyah, leave him alone. He saw us in a state of intoxication with our dunya. He saw that we were blind. Therefore, he did not want to increase us in blindness. A dynamic heart moving with Iman, triggered into tears of reflection and thought at the sight of any event that unfolds before your very eyes. I propose to every one of us that we do not allow any event that happens around us except that we invest it in order to clarify a misconception of Islam. To elaborate on a matter of Aqeedah, to establish one of the principles of Deen, or simply to carve a reminder out of it that will reform us and reform those who are around us. I ask Allah Almighty to give us this type of heart.